Oh, let me get Terry in here. Terry was hey. at the game. So it's my there guy, Terry. What's, what's going on, bro? What's up, guys? Got the dream there team is. out tonight. Dream team in the building. You already know, man. You already know. <laughs> Love it. So I'm back from Berkeley with no voice. I got to say <laughs> that experience was crazy. I know a lot of, I know, you know, a lot of Knicks fans have been hating kind of, you know, on what, if it's a rivalry, if it's not, it is going to be one. You can tell being there that it's a thing. It's going yeah. to grow. And rivalries and things happen with moments, right? So tonight you have Kyrie hitting the, hitting RJ with the Steph Curry game seven shot, basically. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's a moment that is now like, if this is chapter one, it's chapter one. And you can see even with how it got a little testy with Bobby and DeAndre and Marcus, yep. et cetera. This is going to grow. It's going to be a thing. And it's not a bad thing. Like, being there as a just even a basketball fan or someone from New York and a Knicks fan, it was fun back and forth with both of us. They were chanting. We were chanting. It will be a thing. And it will be good for the city overall. Now to the Knicks. Huh. So, one thing I want to say is I go back a year ago and we lose a close game in Brooklyn a year ago. Paris yeah. Levert mm-hmm. dies on Timmy, finishes yep. at the cup, and Fizz goes in the post game talking about, you know, Frank was on the court that game. I remember that. And Fizz goes talking about, you know, um, you know, I wanted, you know, Timmy needs to learn what this is. I wanted to challenge him. And Fizz seems to kind of get carried away with the idea that he's going to mold guys into these things they're not. Like, you see someone do something a little bit interesting, and then he goes all the way in on it. Oh, I yep. love it. Julius, point for it. I love it. Let's let, let's kill the yeah. game. And uh, I know yeah. at the game at Barclays, the screaming for Randall to pass the ball at the end from Knicks fans was insane. It reminded wow. me of the late mellow years where you were. Just there was like, a lot oh, of gro- lot, lot, a lot of moaning and groaning in there for, for for him to pass the ball. A lot of moaning, right? Because we're, we're looking, we're knowledgeable fans, and it genuinely felt like this is going to be deja vu again. Yeah, you know, Kevin Knox goes four for four. You know, Kevin's jumper is legit, and I, I, I got to give him all the props. He's hitting contested threes. It's incredible. He's four for four, and he doesn't shoot again in the last eight minutes. You know? And Crazy. I feel with Fizz, man, and I, gotta, I haven't seen Fizz's post game, so I, I don't know if you said anything about this, but I really need to see him disciplining guys and not letting, not letting things just get out of hand. To me, I just can't imagine on a more mature team at a more mature coach, Julius Randle, being allowed to do that over and over and I understand that the plays broke down at times, so it wasn't just all Julius trying to do something. Mm-hmm. But we really bossed that game. At the point that yeah. we were up three, we had multiple chances to just get something going. Yeah. We just couldn't get it going, and eventually you just knew the Nets were going to score. They had bossed a couple possessions, and then Kyrie came down that last time, and he iso on RJ. It was incredible. It felt like a moment. The whole, you know, everyone stood up in the arena. Knicks fans were trying to chant defense. The Brooklyn, Brooklyn fans were trying to drown them out. It was a great moment. <laughs> but you knew it was going to happen after we didn't execute time and time again down the stretch. Yeah. You know, still some positive signs. You know, RJ, I really, you know, I'm trying not to buy into hype, but he feels like the one. And rebuild usually, oh, uh, you know, they <laughs> tend to go, you tend to struggle until you get that guy. You know, with the Hawks, once you get Trey Young, it changes everything. It changes oh, the yeah. timeline. It changes mm-hmm. what you want to do. Mm-hmm. RJ, it's early. But it really feels like he could be this guy. And we're going to know, we're going to really know really soon, I think, because at this point, he's looking way ahead of schedule. Yeah. I mean, there was legit debate on if RJ should start from uh, all of us smart people. <laughs> and the idea that that um, was even a debate seems crazy now, crazy. considering how he started yeah. the year. True story. He has the mentality. Uh, I was know, captain of that. Ben of the wagon. Yeah, you, you were captain of, of, the, of the bench bandwagon, Macri? I know Alan uh, Hahn was. When we had Hahn on, I, I, he, he I was definitely in. Me too. If I, if I do this for 20 years, I don't know if I'll ever take that bet. My God. <laughs> I, I just said, listen, man, he looks like he's ready. He's number three pick of the draft. We have nothing to lose. Roll the he's dice. He's the best player on the team. He's, he's the, the best the, player he's on the, the team. He's man. legit the best player on the team the, to the fact – What's the, what are the minutes look like? I think he has. He, he had thirty six tonight, man. Thirty. How, how you guys feel about that? How you guys feel about the minutes so far? I don't with, care. With RJ, you, you say go tomorrow. for it. I'm worried about tomorrow. I'm worried about tomorrow. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, because we're going to the game tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> bet, man. like somebody has to play point guard besides Elton Payton tomorrow. Well, no, no. and and it was I I can't imagine him playing RJ again thirty something minutes on a back to back. Like somebody has to be able to dribble. Pass and shoot tomorrow. Man, 
Like he needs he needs help. <laughs> where where is DSJ, man? Where is DSJ, bro? All Probably right. in a bar right now. Yeah. 